So uh, yeah, my name is Stola Hansen. I'm here to talk about how to troubleshoot Teams users in PowerShell. And I boasted on Twitter that it's all about one one-liner in PowerShell. And I'm going to show that to you today and go through each and every attribute and how to mitigate um, and fix them. Currently, I'm in a project where we are migrating 40,000 users from uh, Scarfa Business to Teams. And when moving to Teams only mode, that is actually a move from using Skype for Business, for calling, for uh, federated chat, uh, and for meetings, and move that over to Teams. That is why this one-liner is part of the Skype for Business online PowerShell module. And this is it. Uh, these are the attributes we are looking for. And uh, what we are looking at here is what will tell us about the success of the user. Uh, we, lo we look at the uh, UPN, the SIP address, see that they match, we see that the user is enabled, we see what kind of upgrade mode they have, uh, we see if they are enterprise voice enabled, host ho hosted voice enabled, we see city, usage locations for calling, dial plan for calling, uh, online voice routing policy, which way the call uh, routes. We see the phone number. Uh, we see um, if they have um, audio conferencing enabled or disabled. We see Teams video interrupt um, service policy. Uh, we see Teams calling policy and lots of other policies as well. So you may expand this to look at the other policies you are deploying that are specific per uh, user. Um, we look at the hosting provider, which tells us how the user is migrated. We look at the interpreted user type, and, and this one is magical because this actually tells us the state of the user. If it's a hybrid synced user uh, via um, uh, Azure um, uh, connectivity, and uh, or if it's a pure online user. Um, it also tells us what kind of license you have. So interpreted user type, tells us a lot about the user. Uh, we look at the voice policy, which tells us uh, what kind of telephony uh, solution is in use, calling plans versus direct routing. And we also look at the country uh, region uh, so that we know which country the user resides in. Of course, there's a lot of other uh, attributes we could look at, but this is the toolbox I use. This is how I validate users. Uh, this is how I stay sane in this large project. So it's all about the get CS online user. And as you see, uh, it's uh, called uh, CS, which actually stands for communication server, which is what Sky for Business was called back in the days. It was called office communication server. And then uh, it was, uh, and when PowerShell got introduced, it was actually uh, going to be called communication server, but then they changed it to link. Uh, last minute, marketing, you know. Um, and then this stuck. So that's why we still have it in, um, uh, in Skyfro Business, online, in Teams, and so on. What happened uh, with the latest version of the Teams PowerShell uh, module is that the Skyfro Business commandlets got included in that module. So you don't need to install the Sky for Business Online PowerShell module anymore. We can use the Teams PowerShell module. So let me let me show you. And uh, But before that, uh, I do have a blog post on this. And um, uh, you can look up the one-liner on my blog, msunified.net. So I have that here in uh, PowerShell. So msunified.net, that's my uh, blog. Here you will find the actual one-liner. This is it. This is the one, people. Copy that, have fun with it, and, and get your info. In this blog post, I also explain some of the uh, attributes, what to look for, and how to troubleshoot it. But let's, let's dive into this. First off, I'm going to connect. And uh, there is some caveats there as well. Uh, first off, I'm going to check my um, Teams module because um, 
the module should be the latest one, 116. Uh, if it's not, then you can uh, install the current module. And if you use force, it will just overwrite uh, the current installed module. Uh, because with 116, a lot of stuff happened. Um, as you know, including the Sky for Business online uh, PowerShell commandlets. And uh, we are connecting to this. We are using modern authentication for that. And there is a reason for why you want to use modern authentication. Actually, two reasons. Uh, one is that we can reuse the token. So we can reuse this in uh, when we connect to Sky for Business. So we don't need to specify username and password, and we can reuse them in other um, PowerShell modules that support modern authentication. Later in uh, the demo today, I'm going to show you uh, that I will reuse the token that I uh, create now in uh, the Azure uh, Active Directory PowerShell module. So let's connect here. And uh, I'm just going to uh, do the connection Type my uh, password. Accept the MFA challenge. And connect. So first I'm connecting to Teams. That's the connect to Microsoft Teams um, line. But then we are going to do the um, connection to um, Sky for Business Online. So, but this is great news. Two reasons for that, uh, why it's included in, in the Teams app. One is that now it fully supports reusing the token when connecting to, um, uh, to um, uh, Sky for Business Online, uh, reusing the token from Teams. And one more thing is that when you are reconnecting, it will still reuse the token. Uh, so uh, that is where we include this, enable CS online session for reconnection. But there is one caveat here, which is that this doesn't work actually in the Teams uh, PowerShell module. We actually need to go and, um, and hack this because you see here, this is a PowerShell script that I have stored under temp. Uh, so going back to the PowerPoint. So here's the first tip of today. Um, Andreas uh, Gorzelani, sorry if I uh, butchered that name, was quick to actually extract that from uh, the Sky for Business Online PowerShell module and create that as a script for us. So what you should do is copy all this code um, and um, save it as a uh, PowerShell script and include it as I have done in, uh, at the end here because this will make sure the module reconnects. Because there's one thing about the Sky for Business Online PowerShell module, module which really sucks, is that it needs to reconnect all the time. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, when I was migrating a lot of users, validating a lot of users, I were authenticating all the time. And especially if I run this in multiple windows, um, yeah it was uh, not a good uh, place to be. So here's the one-liner. We run it on my user. This is in uh, my production tenant. Here you see uh, what we get. And this, this is a single pane of glass. I need to know the health of my team's user because there's so much information here. I'm going to go through each and every one of them. And again, uh, it's on my um, uh, blog post, msuunified.net, and search for toolbox. This is what I've been using all time. Uh, so there are uh, multiple ways to do this. Is to um, uh, import uh, a batch of users. Um, so here I have two users, myself and my MVP colleague, Morten Hellebro, so that I can easily loop through this and get it for multiple users. This is great, uh, of course, in order to see and uh, compare. But if you're doing this for thousands of users, then um, it, uh, uh, you need to do some more uh, stuff. So I created a uh, for each loop uh, for that. And what this one does is, first off, it shows uh, how many users we are migrating. Uh, we are um, 
of course, doing the one-liner, storing that into an array, uh, which we create here, and then get all the attributes. Then I actually include this one, start sleep at 300 milliseconds, uh, between 300 and 400 milliseconds. And the reason for that is that I want to avoid one thing, and that is uh, this one. So um, uh, when it times out, you actually get uh, a timeout and uh, it try it's trying to connect to the remote server. It's failing uh, because it needs to recreate the session. If you don't uh, actually put a delay in there, it will fail out for uh, tens of users, which means that um, uh, yeah, it, it creates more clutter in your environment and you may miss out on the users in your loop. Uh, so um, that is where you get this recreating a new remote PowerShell session. We want to make sure that happens before we go too far. And this is the great part because with the Teams uh, part, uh, Teams PowerShell module and uh, the um, using this uh, Sky for Business Online through that, we don't need to re-authenticate. It just uh, uses the same token. It's beautiful. So here you see the, uh, the script in action where I, uh, for each 100 user, I just post how many users we have left. And uh, as you understand, it's take, if it takes half a second per user, this takes some time if you have thousands of users to do that and get that info. So uh, that is what is happening here. So for every 100 user, I will post uh, where we are and um, uh, and uh, how many users we have left. This is for sanity, uh, so that you, you, if it takes hours, you know why it takes hours. So running this, two users, boom. Uh, and then uh, I have it in this variable, which I then export to a CSV. Because then I can use Excel to um, create views based on this. How many are in teams only mode? How are still in island mode or any other mode? How many are uh, in uh, Norway? How many are uh, have the country Norway, but not usage location Norway, for instance, and so on and so forth. So this is a great way for me to validate. Of course, we probably could script this and create an awesome tool. I recommend that you try to break it down because each migration is different and each way of reporting is, is different as well. So don't overdo it uh, when uh, when doing these kinds of reporting and, and doing those uh, health checks um, because the, this changes and um, um, and it's it's sometimes it's better to just look at it in Excel and you can send over to um, uh, those uh, who you are working for in order to say hey these users failed is this intended what kind of users are those and so on and so forth and this people is how I stay sane during a uh, team's migration and moving to teams only mode, implementing telephony, implementing policies and making sure that the hybrid status is OK and. How many licenses they have and do they have the correct licenses? So first thing we do validate UPN and SIP address. I have seen issues with this as well. I've seen a lot of issues with each and every of these attributes, and I'm going to go through them now. So user principal name and SIP address needs to match. Uh, it's not that important anymore, actually, as it was back in the days with Sky for Business, because Teams doesn't use your SIP address to sign in. It uses your UPN to sign in. So the SIP address could, in theory, be different, but why would you want that? And also, it should be the same as the email address. What I've seen in some environments is that you have duplicate SIP addresses, which means that multiple users have the same SIP address. Um, that's an issue. So if you see that they are licensed, they are enabled, they are migrated, but they don't have a SIP address, then you probably have a SIP address conflict. And why do we still care about the SIP address? Well, turns out that Teams is built on Sky for Business. So uh, we care about all the Sky for Business attributes because that's the how Teams works, especially when you do federation, still a Sky for Business um, 
uh, infrastructure, doing the federation between organizations, telephony, all that, Sky for Business. Meetings powered by Sky for Business. So that's why we care. So check this out and, uh, and also compare it with the email address uh, if you can. Number two, we uh, want to validate that the user is actually enabled. And uh, these three um, attributes tells us a lot. Uh, it says that the uh, um, user is uh, enabled for enterprise voice. We see that the user is in Teams only mode and uh, we see that the online dialing conferencing policy uh, is service allowed. And this means that the user has an audio conferencing license. There is one more attribute though uh, we are looking for. So let me grab that really quick. I want to add enabled to this. So let's do that. Uh, was some uh, that was the wrong one. Let's see here. Because enabled also is important to see that the user is enabled for Teams at all. And here you see uh, connecting, reconnecting to uh, um, CS online user. And you saw how flawlessly that worked. This is what we get uh, when using this through the Teams PowerShell module. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Microsoft, for this. I I'm so happy now. Uh, and uh, yeah, here you see. User is enabled, but I have seen that this attribute actually can lie to you. It can say that you are enabled, but you don't still have a license, which means that we should validate those licenses. And that happens in Azure Active Directory. So here I uh, use the uh, preview and I connect to Azure AD. And again, re reusing the token and we are signed in. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, golden, golden stuff. So what are the licenses available in the tenant? Uh, so these are the licenses we have in our tenant. Uh, you have um, Enterprise Pack, which is Office 365 E3. You have Power BI Pro, EMS Premium. You have uh, SPE E5. The, that's, one in, that's one's interesting and uh, phone system virtual user and so on and so forth. Um, there is a website for this, of course, to figure out what is what, which you can go into and uh, have a look uh, where all these are defined. And the GUID is the same across tenants. So if you do this for uh, one customer in one environment, it will work in the next environment as well. Um, and um, here you can then search for the licenses you have. Make sure that they have at least an F3 license, uh, E3 license or an E5 license or even a business premium license or a, a uh, of Microsoft 365 business license, making sure that the users have those. Um, and uh, so the licenses we are going to look for here are these three. Um, Enterprise Pack, Deskless Pack. Deskless Pack is F3. And uh, SPE5 is Microsoft 365 E5. This one is actually um, a calling plans with 120 minutes included, uh, which you also have in here, but you're not going to look for that. You're going to look for these three. And um, I can check a single user uh, for this, uh, running this command. And um, uh, by getting the object ID of the user, uh, we can expand and, and look at assigned licenses, uh, but I don't currently have the object ID of the user, so this will probably uh, fail. No, it worked. I may have done some magic in the background there. So these are the licenses that are assigned. Of course, there are no display names for those, so we need to look for the uh, GUIDs. That's okay, we have them. Uh, so what I do, uh, and this is quick, uh, this one is so much faster than the Sky for Business Online uh, PowerShell module. So what I do here is I specify the attributes with the um, licenses. Uh, I check for two things, license and not available in Active Directory. Because you get migration batches from uh, customers when moving over to Teams only mode. And those lists are shit. Yeah, they are horrible. So when you check this, 
people are not maybe even existing in Azure Active Directory, especially if there are thousands of users in Active Directory, if they haven't done a good cleanup or the source is uh, not the correct one, then uh, this will uh, fail horribly. So let's uh, check that. And um, so we have if uh, user list is uh, zero because we do the uh, get Azure user and we look at the assigned licenses and we're looking for uh, the license. If it's zero, then then they don't exist in Active Directory. But then uh, we are looking for that uh, if they are not containing enterprise pack, if they're not containing deskless pack, and if and if they are not containing Microsoft 365 E3, they are unlicensed and either should be fixed or removed from the migration batch. So, yep, yeah, quick and easy. Uh, all users were in uh, Active Directory. So let me show you what it may look like when it, uh, in, in a larger environment. So here we see that uh, we have users that are not licensed. Uh, so we, um, we uh, capture the email address, store that in a CSV, because then we can in Excel, we can do um, uh, VLOOKUP and have the email addresses in one list and have the migration list in, a, in, another, um, in another sheet. And then we can use VLOOKUP to say, hey, these users should be removed uh, from the batch because they are not licensed. Also, it will throw an error if um, the user doesn't exist. And again, if uh, my attribute was uh, equal nil, then it doesn't exist in Azure Active Directory, and then we can specify that as well. Instead of it failing while we are migrating, because that could be uh, less fun. Less red when migrating, that's good. All right, that was the licensing part. And uh, next we want to look at calling. And uh, here are more attributes that we are looking for. Um, and uh, here, it's for my user. I uh, have the city Oslo. I want the city to match the usage location, to match the dial plan, to match the country, uh, region, display name. Uh, also, I want it to match the line URI I have. So it's a plus 47, which is Norway. And also on-prem line URI. And uh, also, if we are using direct routing, I want it to match a uh, Norwegian route that I have for my uh, breakout in Norway. And this could be really difficult to troubleshoot. There could be some discrepancies here, and um, which means that you get the uh, wrong uh, number norm normalizations in Teams. Uh, if you don't have a routing policy, you, you won't get the dial pads in, um, uh, in Teams, for instance, um, and so on and so forth. This is okay to look at one-on-one uh, -on -one user, but when you have thousands of users and finding out before they make that support case that they are not com correctly configured, that's where the essence is. And we also look at the team's calling policy. So if you have a specific calling policy here, uh, this is where you define voicemail, for instance, if it's enabled or not. Uh, because you remember we had that hosted voicemail attribute. It's not in use anymore. So it's not respected. So Azure, uh, voicemail is actually configured through calling policies. And what we did, for instance, for Norwegian customers, we had to remove transcripts from voicemail because it doesn't support Norwegian and Norwegian dialects, apparently. And uh, so instead of getting gibberish and sometimes bad words, uh, we disabled transcript, for instance, for Norwegian users, uh, which we added to the calling policies. You want that to match that as well. Voice policy is also important. Voice policy shows you uh, if it's uh, direct routing or if it's um, uh, calling plans. So hybrid voice means it's direct routing. If you are assigned a calling plan, it would say business voice here instead. Um, and uh, I believe uh, I also have, if you do the same for uh, my colleague, uh, Morten Hellebro, Let's let's do some live coding here. Probably going to go horribly wrong, but uh, bear with me, Morten Hellebru at cloudway.nl. Let's let's see if that works. Yeah, it didn't because I didn't spell his name right. Um, at uh, yeah, and I still have a typo. 
Perfect. That's uh, live, you know. The, now you know it's live. He has business voice uh, for uh, voice policy because he has calling plans in Sweden because they are now launched in Sweden. Yay. But what we see in a lot of deployments is that we have issues. We have issues with usage location. Turns out no one else cares about users, usage location except those working with Teams and dial plans and uh, audio conferencing. Because this dial plan you see here, this, this is the one that is assigned to you by default based on your usage location. So I see organizations just use the same country regardless of which country people are in. That fails horribly. So dial plan uh, is important for usage location and also the number you get when you are using um, uh, using uh, audio conferencing. So audio conferencing is, uh, you see the number you get in the Teams invite, that's based on the usage location. So I recommend before you enable this is to take a look at uh, the country of origin or city and uh, see if that matches usage location because then it's a higher chance for you to um, do it, get it right with the numbers. Um, and there's one more thing. You have also tenant dial plans. Tenant dial plans is your own phone number normalizations. So for instance, you deploy telephony within Teams and you want to limit uh, shared phones to dial premium numbers then you actually need to normalize and figure out what are premium numbers in Norway, Sweden, US, France, Singapore, and so on and so forth. Who has that knowledge? Well, MVP Ken Lasko got you covered. UCDialPlans.com. It's an amazing tool because then you don't need to learn the regex going into making this happen. It just works. And he has the uh, uh, routes prepared for you. You can even have um, uh, dial plans, voice policies, so that uh, you can assign uh, that uh, some people are local only, some can dial internationally, and some can dial premium numbers. Because if you have um, Teams displays, if you have um, common area phones in your environment, you don't want people to dial uh, out uh, for premium numbers in the evenings or by mistake or, or something like that. So use that. Uh, when assigning policies, you see here we have Teams calling policy, we have online voice routing policy. You have a new uh, commandlet now called uh, batch policy assignment operation. And this takes, makes it sure that it takes seconds for you to assign a policy to a batch of users, up to 5,000 users per batch. Uh, so here I'm going to assign um, the unrestricted policy to myself. I already have it though, uh, but this is how long it takes, regardless uh, of how many users you have in this batch. And uh, there is one caveat though, because it takes up to 72 hours before it gets applied. But that's also the case if you do it by using grant as well. Uh, so uh, here you can say, check the status of those batches. And uh, it could be multiple types of batches. This is one I did uh, yesterday. It's completed now. Uh, but sometimes you may see it takes uh, days uh, before they get completed. But typically they do get completed. And you can follow that. And that's why I have the batch name, uh, no, the batch, uh, batch um, uh, attribute here with the users uh, to, to go into the CSV file because I, do, I want to um, see what kind of users I put into the batch because you cannot see that in here um, so that you can check, hey, are we going, uh, is this happening? Are they part of a current batch that is being worked on or is this a new request? Uh, so the policies can be assigned using this command. So you specify the policy type here. Here you have online voice routing policy. It could have been the, um, uh, teams calling policy, for instance, and so on and so forth. So use that. Microsoft is trying to improve our lives. 
and uh, this is a way for them to do that. All right, next we're going to look at the location, right? So here we want to see uh, my location, usage location that happens in Azure uh, Active Directory. Nothing we can do there in uh, Teams or Sky for Business Online PowerShell. And we're looking at the uh, usage location uh, attribute. You can also include the country here. Um, if you want to change it, use the set Azure AD user and the correct usage location. So here you need to connect the usage location with the tenant dial plan, with the type of phone number they should have, with the type of, um, of um, Teams calling policy they should have, with the type of online voice routing policy and so on and so forth, because these could be different based on uh, location. So this is important. If you, if you had the wrong uh, usage location, and you um, have already assigned a audio conferencing, so they got the wrong number, right? In uh, their Teams invite, they got the Swedish number instead of a Norwegian number, if that was the case. And uh, you know, Swedes and Norwegians, they, they, it's not okay to get the Swedish number if you're a Norwegian or a Norwegian number if you're Swedish. It's like neighbors, you know. And um, so what we do here is, um, uh, well, if, if you um, change that, you need to actually in start a meeting migration because the number doesn't change by default for existing meetings. New meetings will get a new number, but old meetings won't. So if you start uh, using the CSEX meeting migration, which is still Sky for Business Online PowerShell module, here you see you're reconnecting, it just works, it's beautiful. And, uh, and here, yeah, we want to continue. Thanks, and it ran. Uh, and we can get the summary as well and see how it's going. Here you see we have three succeeded um, and pending is one. And actually we use this meeting migration when looking, when moving from island mode to teams only. Because what happens when you do that is that uh, the meeting migration service kicks in automatically. This of course requires that you use um, Exchange Online uh, for your email, so it doesn't work for on-prem users. Uh, so that's why you should migrate Exchange first, then move to Teams only mode if you can, uh, because then the meetings get updated. So we actually use this succeeded number here to count how many users we have migrated. Um, and uh, that's, that's actually a nice way to, to get that status. But here you can see that it's in progress probably soon. Um, and it may actually take up to three hours. Last night it took uh, 30 minutes, uh, but it may take up to three hours before this process starts. Be also aware if your users have a lot of meetings that are going to be changed, new updates to those meetings are being sent out uh, to attendees, but there is an update to the meeting. You have a new number, right? So that's why. All right. I haven't gotten any questions yet, so I'm uh, getting on. And uh, let's look at hybrid identity and hybrid Sky for Business. This is a fun one. And this is where the magic happens because we're looking at hosting provider. Hosting provider here, you see it's cifedonlinelink.com. And this is important for Federation um, because if this is not uh, populated correct, then um, you are still on prem and Federation won't work for you. Uh, also interpreted user type, and this is the magical attribute, people. Here you see I'm pure online, Sky for Business user with Teams license. It actually states that I have a Teams license. And this is actually something I discovered last night um, because I think it's quite new uh, that it actually states that. So I need to double check that. Uh, so we can actually use that to um, uh, verify the license, but the Azure commandlet is so much quicker so I'm still probably going to use that, but it's good for reporting anyway. So after each migration batch, I actually go in and run get C as online user for all users I have migrated to see the status of the migration, to see that if you had someone that failed to migrate, that uh, did have the wrong hosting provider and so on and so forth. So let me show you what it looks like when it doesn't work. Um, so. If it failed, uh, it would state that hosting priority is SRV colon. 
SRE column means that uh, my uh, hosting provider is on-prem. And there could be multiple reasons for that. You are unable to update the attributes in, uh, in um, Active Directory, or this is populated and synced out. Um, and you then remo you removed Sky for Business Server, but the attribute is still there. Um, then Federation will fail for you. Also, you see here hybrid on-prem SFB user with Teams license. Again, Teams will work and all that, but you will have Federation issues and some other issues as well. This is what it looks like uh, when it's super awesome. And this is what it looks like when you haven't migrated yet. Hybrid on-prem SFB user, SRV, you haven't been migrated yet. Um, you probably are not in Teams only mode, or if you are, that's, uh, that's also a problem. Uh, because then you will have federation issues because the user is still on-prem um, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is for an on-prem user, uh, online user that works, online user that doesn't work. All right. Um, Andres has another blog post that I heavily refer to because interpreted user type, pretty much not documented by Microsoft. So he did that. Um, and he has a comment on all this, what they mean. And it's a great source for troubleshooting. Pure online, no service, means you don't have the uh, license. Pure uh, online, no service, with deleted licenses. He had license, but lost them. Hybrid online, disabled user, user is disabled. Thank you for notifying me that. And so on and so forth. This is beautiful stuff, right? Um, so use that blog post to do that. And um, uh, yeah, and a shout out to Andres uh, Gorsellani. Gorsellani, probably, he is uh, from Argentina. And uh, great blog post on that. I refer to it as often as I can. All right, uh, so if you want to clean out the attributes on-prem because you, are, you have migrated, you don't have Skype for Business anymore, servers are gone, and but you still have the attributes. Well, you can clear out the attributes by using get ad user and um, uh, clear out the msrtcc deployment locator, which is the um, uh, which is the hosting provider. Uh, or you can clear out all the attributes uh, for all users. So here's a loop for you. This is a hack. So I need to actually create a variable with the principal name because if I use this. It just uses the full CDN name, which then breaks the whole thing. But here we clear out all RTC, uh, uh, MS RTC SIP uh, attributes, which is the phone number, SIP address, uh, deployment locator, what kind of server you belong to, and so on and so forth. I'm currently not connected to um, uh, an on prem environment, so I can't show you. Right. And um, Trying to round, round off here. Uh, here we actually are uh, looking at all the users that still have SRV as deployment locator because that makes uh, makes them fail spectacularly to only changing those and not like everyone. Uh, line URI, uh, it's the phone number that you have for um, this. There's multiple ways to do that for direct routing. You set it using the on-prem line URI. Uh, enterprise voicemail enabled. Sometimes you have the line URI, but they are not enabled for enterprise voice, then they won't get the dial pad. Uh, if you're unable to set this, this means that the MSRTC SIP line is still populated in Active Directory. So you need to clear that out, or you can actually work with phone numbers on-prem. It's faster actually. So we're actually doing that in this 40,000 user project. We're going to use numbers uh, locally instead. Uh, so we are populating the MSRTC zip line, and then it will sync out, which means I cannot edit it online because it's synced out on-prem, so this is the way I need to manage it. Or if you have calling plans, then you uh, manipulate the line URI, not the on-prem line URI, but the line URI. All right, so to sum up this one-liner, people, this is how you stay sane when moving to Teams only mode. It tells us so much about the user. And before the tickets start uh, coming in, 
then uh, you uh, can actually start mitigating a lot of actions and informing users, hey, you weren't re migrated, re migrated correct or enabled correct, we are working on it and so on and so forth. This is, yeah, that's why I'm so sane, right? So, this is actually something I write about. Uh, I write the uh, calling and meetings chapter and, and all these tips and tricks I talk about in this book. And there is a quarter. If you're not using this book, Office 365 for IT pros, uh, to stay top on uh, Teams and Office 365, you are missing out, quote myself, because I use this book. When I need to look at what Tony Redmond writes about uh, or what, what Gustavo Vélez writes about, because they talk at the same time as me right now, uh, I look at this book because it's updated monthly with uh, new content every month and we tune it and because Office 365 is changing all the time. Also, I want to plug my latest blog posts because you can use uh, Power Automate to set yourself in, in Do Not Disturb and Focusing Mode in Teams. It's beautiful. Thank you uh, for spending the time here today and uh, checking out my session. Thank you, Stola, for this presentation and all your demos. Always great to follow your sessions and amazing what you can do, right, with only one PowerShell one-liner. Um, I have no questions in the chat, but if you have any questions, please, please uh, put them in the meeting chat or raise your hand and I will unmute you. All right. While we wait, though, uh, Monius, do you have any experience with this? What's your thought about uh, this and, and what do you do? Because I uh, know you do a lot of projects as well. This, uh, hi, Steli, how to pronounce your name? Yeah, Stella, Steli is perfect. Okay, uh, it's a very good session, thank you. Uh, thank I you. I was very much interested. Uh, I, used to, I used to do that uh, for a few deployments uh, using some script, but, uh, but the your session is very good. Uh, you you organize everything very nicely and then put it in very like a step by step thought process procedure. It's very good. So thank you. Uh, thank I you hope you publish the script so that we can do some like customization at our end to deploy in our environment as well. Very good. Yeah, yeah. So the script is so the one liner is available uh, at my blog, msunify.net, search for toolbox, and you will have it. Uh, it's just a one liner and everything else is just. PowerShell, right? Okay, thank you. Very good. Thanks. Thank you very much.